What's going on guys? So today we're going to be talking about a very controversial subject and that is how to squat your truck. So this is, I guess, for noobs and whatnot because if you know all about it, then you've probably already done it, but maybe you're interested in the truck. So we will go over the truck first, but squatting your truck. A lot of hate is involved with it. People don't understand it. They think it's stupid. You're pulling a ghost trailer. I think a lot of people are insecure about people judging them. So they're like automatically hate it. And they're like, oh no, I could never do that. A little squat absolutely just makes a truck so much better in my opinion but that is just my opinion so um yeah but you know of course there's like the extremes where people have like a nine inch lift in the front and then minus four in the back you, you know they like can't see 20 yards in front of them and stuff stuff like that's sure that's really dangerous and stuff and in most cases it looks pretty stupid but um yeah like i said a little bit of squat definitely helps so we're gonna go over my truck show you my setup and then I'm going to show you the different ways that you can use to squat your truck. So this is my 2018 Chevy Silverado and they come with a really big rake in the in the front from the factory so I knew I wanted to get rid of that right away. So I went with a three inch motofab leveling kit and then just a quick lamps. So three inch, you probably can't even see, three inch, I need to paint this because I kind of scratched it. Uh, three inch leveling kit and then I have ready lift upper control arms. So it's all happy dandy. Um, you know three inches a pretty big leveling kit but that's a different subject for a different time but that brought it up i'll put a picture up of it that brought it up pretty much level it still looked a little butt high to me but it probably wasn't but it just looked that way you know the way that the different fenders are kind of designed the truck flows and everything it just looks a little butt high so i wasn't cool with it i wanted it to drop down a little bit so i went with the route of removing the rear block so i've got it right here this is the factory rear block and it is about a one inch block so this is obviously lowering the truck about one inch and i will say this is not how far it squats normally we're on a little hill but it, i wanted for this video to it to be a little tucking a little bit more so as you can see but i will back it up over here on some level ground at the end of this video just so you can see how it sits because it does squat a little bit and if you're wanting to copy this setup then I want to let you see exactly how it will sit but um, I guess let's go back over here and we'll see and this is gonna answer a lot of questions people have because I get a ton of DMS on Instagram people asking let me see it's probably too dark let me shine my light all right so the u-bolts you can reuse your factory u-bolts with no block so as you can see right under the lift spring i can't point because i'm holding my phone right under the leaf spring that block was there so you just remove that under the leaf spring and then the factory u-bolts just tighten right back up they got plenty of threads you don't have to go buy any aftermarket so this is absolutely a free way to um, squat or reverse level your truck so reverse level being if you don't have a leveling kit or you have a smaller one like a one and a half two inch it's not going to sit level it's still going to be a little nose down you can take the rear block out, drop the back a little bit, and make it even with the front. So it'd be perfectly level. That's called reverse leveling it. You can do what I'm going to tell you in a minute on a stock truck and level it out that way. But um, yeah, removing the block, easiest way. The axle still has its pin, still lines up, no issues there. It's just a small drop. It's not going to like make your drive shaft explode. So I did have a lot of questions about the U-bolts. They're perfectly fine with a factory U-bolt. They have plenty of thread. So that's the easiest way and the cheapest well it's free a little bit of time and effort and you can have your you know, block out the back so the next step is going to be some drop shackles so that is what is right here i've had i bought these literally the same time i bought my leveling kit i was going to put these on there before i did the remove this this is a um one to two inch drop i believe it is it might be a two to three i can't remember because it's been literally over a year since i bought these but it is adjustable um, I say that lightly because you can use one or the other. It's not like on the fly, but um, yeah. So obviously, uh, let's see if we can get under here and, and see. Uh, yeah, right here. Get my phone out again. All right. So there is your factory one. Uh, that's dirt. That's not rust. <laughs> scared me at first, but that is dirt. Um, that's your factory thing. So... Let me try to get this up under there just to show y'all. So this would mount in there and obviously drop your leaf spring down. Or actually it would raise your leaf spring up. So it would be up closer to the bed 
and that would allow the truck to drop down. So like I said, this is a very popular way that people reverse level their truck, or if you really wanna squat it, then you do this. These are super cheap, they're like, pretty much all brands are under $100. If, if it, you know, you can get some that are like stupid expensive, but most all your good brands are still under $100. This is a very solid piece, I believe it was 50 or 40, so I just haven't put them on. I went the route, um, if you, go to put it on you have to remove your rear hitch assembly and i just did not want to do that at the time i actually started to do it started filming a video and then chose not to do it and that's when i just took the rear bolts uh the that's when i just took the blocks out and the truck absolutely sits perfect to me so i had no reason to put this in there but if y'all really do want to see the truck squatted i will at some point during good weather and free time put these on just to show the truck really squatting, put it on the max when you know, whatever. Um, and so if you wanna really see that, leave a comment because if I don't get a lot of comments, I'm probably just not gonna do it because it is a pretty decent amount of work to potentially just take right back off. And I do everything on the floor. I don't have a lift, so that kind of stuff kind of sucks. Uh, one thing I do wanna show, the uh So if you can see up there, there is my bump stop. So there's still about at least an inch, if not a little bit more of room there. But if we look up here, we've still got, you know, bigger than my fist gap right here. So it's pretty much perfect for my wheel and tire setup and the bump stops, the bump stops will hit before it hits the fender, but they're not, it's not low enough. Cause if I had drop shackles on there, it would probably be pretty close to the bump stops touching. In which case that's going to ride like absolute garbage or um, you're going to cut them off so there's not constantly hitting and then that's kind of dangerous had to do that with my mustang when it was bagged but don't tell anybody that especially not whoever bought it <coughs> um yeah i'm just kidding that i actually did that but it's not like a super safety hazard whatever okay so we went over the free option we went over the cheap option both of these i consider very good options neither of them are unsafe as long as you get a a good strong one of these uh, drop shackles there's no reason for this to not be safe this as long as your model of your truck still has the alignment stuff on the axle there's no reason your leaf springs won't bolt up and be no different than with this on there except the truck will be an inch lower no different there now the next option that people do if you because a lot of people will do that want really really squatted truck they'll do the no block the drop shackle and then it's still not enough so then they go in here and they will take out the extra leaf spring the uh helper leaf or whatever you want to call it um different trucks will have different amount of leaf springs or different sizes or whatever but as you can see that one um it's got the little pad there and it's not touching um so obviously when the truck gets loaded then it goes down onto that and that supplies some extra um weight dispersion or it's just an extra leaf spring i don't know how to say it but it's just it's an extra leaf spring so you can you know haul more weight and um uh, yeah so people will take that out as well and then that gives you that much you know more drop so that's pretty much as far as i know the three real big main ways um another thing people will do i don't know how much is required but i mean you can swap this to where the leaf springs go under the axle and then you know you can drop them as much as you want but that's not the typical thing most of your truck guys are going to do those one of those three options and these two i say 100 percent go for it removing leaf springs nah that's just nah you know hey your truck if you want to do it go for it that's just personally i wouldn't recommend that both of those 100 percent would say go for it but removing leaf springs i just wouldn't go that route it's just uh getting a little unsafe but um yeah so that's pretty much how you can squat your truck and um I think a little bit of squat goes a long ways. I will back the truck up here in a minute on some level ground and show y'all, you know, how it sits. But, and for all those that hate and say like, oh, you couldn't afford the rear lift. Most all of your expense is in pretty much 99% of your expense is in the front of the vehicle. So you usually get a lift block, which is, this is just a stock one, but it'll be this, but you know, several inches taller, less than a hundred dollars. If that probably like 40 bucks. So those jokes you just look stupid because that just shows you have no idea what you're talking about because you got a thousand dollars up front minimum probably um in a lift kit up front and then a hundred dollar block uh 
not your insult didn't go over very well. That's pretty much a breakdown. Hopefully you did learn something. If you want to squat your truck, I mean, just YouTube it, Google it. I'm sure whatever vehicle you have, it's already been done before and you can see what their setup is. Most cases on a level truck, you'll see a three inch leveling kit and then drop shackles or no blocks in the back for a squat. Usually if you do like a two inch, um, you don't get enough clearance for big tires in the front. So most people do, you know, a three inch or bigger and then start dropping stuff in the back in order to make it really squat. So hopefully you did enjoy. This is my little how to squat your truck. So for you that hate the uh, squatting truck community, I apologize for telling people and enlightening them on how to do it because now they might possibly do it to their truck. So I do apologize for that. But um, yeah, squatting your truck, I freaking love it. And it looks so much better with a little bit of squat. The extreme trucks, not for me, but a little bit goes a long ways. Hopefully the wind is not destroying the audio right now like I bet it is, but um, man, look at all that pollen falling. So let's pull the truck on some flat ground and then we'll pull it off the driveway and really see how far we can squat it before we hit the bump stops. All right guys, so we're gonna swap over to the iPhone just so y'all can see exactly things straight and not kind of disordered with GoPro because it kind of does. So we're on the iPhone, the audio is probably a little bit different, but this is kind of the look you're gonna be with. Three inch leveling kit in the front and no blocks in the back. So sits perfect to me, not too much. Still a little bit uneven. I think this driver's side's not quite as down as or as high because the driveway is not perfectly level, but as you can see, still, still squatting. Just a little bit more on the other side, but yeah. Ooh, I bet that wind is wrecking the audio right here. So I'm gonna back the truck up over on the driveway and uh, we're gonna tuck it pretty good and uh, see how she looks. We got her pulled off the driveway a little bit. She's tucking pretty good. So this is a, about a 32 inch tall tire, they're 33, so they run a little small. So not quite a full fledge. Let's get in there and see about the bump stop. I can't even see it. No, we still got about half an inch, quarter of an inch until it touches. So. But she's squatting pretty good. Honestly, if I ran drop shackles, it'd be somewhat similar to this. Maybe not quite as much, but similar. These guys. See how we're flexing. Ooh. Ooh, kill them. Ooh. I'm sorry for that. I do apologize. So if you ever want to see what your truck looks like squatted, just pull it off uneven a little bit. Well, hopefully you did enjoy, maybe you learned something. If you hate squat or you previously did, maybe you've changed your mind a little bit. Maybe you'll give it a shot. Maybe not the extreme like super nine inch drop shackles, no leaf spring and, or removed leaf spring and no block in the back, that kind of stuff. Maybe that's a little too extreme. I can understand why you would hate that. Because for one, when you're driving, you probably can't see 20 yards in front of you. It is unsafe, I understand that. But squat in general, people absolutely hate super hardcore, especially like Silverado forms and the Facebook pages and stuff. Absolutely just go bananas over there. So um, I'm sure people will probably be triggered. Somebody watching this video will be upset over it. But just give it a shot. Sure, if you don't like it, you don't have to like it. But just remember, if you're watching this video, you're watching someone else's video that has their truck squatted, you're on their Instagram, you see their truck, you see the squat, just remember, it's not your truck. You don't have to like it. With that being said, I will catch you on the next one.